Hello everyone, welcome to the event recap for Steamfest 2020 featuring Lolo Man. Now, Lolo Man was not originally supposed to be attending Steamfest. I actually registered it kind of as a trick. I was registering it, but I was actually going to bring a new version of Long Long Man instead. I have um, the design files kind of done and I have some tweaks made to it and I was going to be bringing that instead, but I was just registering this just kind of as a ruse. Um, but I ended up not having enough time Time to do Long Long Man, so I brought Lolo Man instead. This is complicated. Um, but anyway, I ended up bringing Lolo Man. The reason I didn't want to bring this bot is because the floor in the Colorado Arena is just awful. It is just wavy and hilly, and there's like one inch gaps in it, and um, people like <coughs> Rickety Cricket have really made that floor terrible over the years. Um, so it's really not a good arena for Lolo Man, and I'm going to act like I was just trying to prove that Lolo Man just, you know, really needs a certain conditions in the arena. Um, but realistically, this was just the wrong arena for this bot. So let's get started with the first fight. My very first fight of the day for Lolo Man was against a bot named Ill Will. Ill Will is a vertical spinner. It's two-wheel drive and has a wedge that kind of um, touches the floor in the front. Typically, in a good arena, on a good floor, I can get under pretty much everyone, so I really wasn't that concerned going into it because I didn't know just how bad the floor was. Um, but generally speaking, I can get underneath people. Verticals can do a lot of damage against me, so yeah, I wasn't really sure how this would work out, but this was my first time with Lolo Man in the Colorado arena, so let's see how that went. Red Corner, are you ready? This match begins in three, two, one, fight! Both for Washington now easy. Logan is very low, and he's got the low ground. That's going to be tough for Little Will with that gyration dance that he's pulling. He's going to be driving over him a lot. He's going to have to find his side if he has any hope of getting some of that spinny action out of the low man. The old man's specialty is the pit. Without a pit, he's pretty good at the pit. So he gets some good testing. And if he can prevent Little Will from causing any kind of damage, it's going to be very difficult for Little Will to win. Little Will continues to go right over the court. Maybe he can catch that corner. The pushing battle is begun, and he's stepping up that weapon, hoping to get a catch. For this fight, I ended up going with the wedgelet configuration instead of the wedge configuration, and 
I think maybe that's only beneficial against some bots. Uh, maybe just in this arena, it's never going to be beneficial, but a lot of them ended up flipping up and he was able to catch a couple of them and it just really wasn't effective as it should have been. Thankfully, with the kind of robustness of Lolo Man, there's not a whole lot you can do to this. Um, I think his drive just ended up going out or something like that happened. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk to him afterwards, but he ended up just um, being able to not move and the weapon wasn't working, so he ended up tapping out and that was it. Um, so thankfully, this was just a case where Lolo Man just kind of outlasted the other guy. So that was good, but Definitely after this fight, I knew that it was going to be a very, very difficult competition because there was many places where I could very easily get high-sided. I definitely could not reliably cross the seam in the middle, and the drive just was not working the same way as it usually was. So cross your fingers, move on to fight two. My second fight of the day was against McChangelot, and as the name would imply, it has uh, various different attachments and various different modes. It is a modular bot, and for this fight, Kyle decided to go with the kind of grabber-lifter mechanism, uh, which was an interesting choice um, because this is kind of a long, big thing to actually grab and pick up. I decided to switch over to my wedge configuration. I have two different wedges. I have a standard wedge and I have this wedge, which actually has these little nubs in the front. So the idea behind this is that as someone rides up this wedge, it will kind of grab and catch onto them and hopefully I can push them around. So let's see how that fight went.
So unfortunately with this fight, once again, the floor was my nemesis, that's not a big deal, um, but I was just really unable to use this wedge effectively um, because he was kind of up a little higher in all the places that mattered, so he would either drive right over top of me or these little nubs were not able to actually catch and then push him. So it was actually kind of a problematic fight and I ended up losing this one um, just simply because I couldn't really show that I had any control or aggression and I certainly didn't do any damage to him. Um, so it was probably not the best fight for either of us, um, but this put me down in the loser's bracket. So let's see how I manage from there. My third fight of the day was an interesting one. I was up against Kelpie, which is David Small's three pound flipper bot. Now a flipper is a very interesting bot to fight against something like this because that's really all you can do against something like this. You can't really get a weapon into it. The horizontal is really too high to get into it. A flipper bot is just the perfect configuration for this other than a hammer bot. Anyone out there taking notes? Um, so anyway, let's see how this fight went against Kelpie. Red Square, are you ready? Are you fighting three, two, one, fight? Kelpie rushes across the scene. Having trouble getting under Lobo Man though. Lobo Man backs Kelpie into the wall and pins him there. Seems he's uh, content to just let him sit there. Kelpie trying to find a spot where he can get under the wall. <laughs> He's just juggling them around the arena now. And Lolo Man splits over so his wedge is not as effective. Flip him up to get him stuck against the wall. Oh. Oh. Lolo oh. Man's having a little bit of trouble there. Sorry. Scuffy's coming in for another flip it looks like. Yeah. And he loosened him up. Lots of good flips by Kelpie this match. Lolo Man's got him pinned and he's content to just sit there for 10 seconds. <laughs> Three, two, one. Kelpie trying to maneuver around for another flip. Lolo Man's content to just turn in place. Oh, he's got him. He didn't turn back enough, so Kelpie gets another good flip. <laughs> Kelpie content to just hit Lolo <laughs> Man on top of him. I don't think anyone's too surprised with how this fight ended up. I was able to get a couple pins on him um, just from these little um, wedge lit nubs in the front or wedge nubs in the front, but 
I was definitely no match against him. He does have a little bit better drive, especially on this type of an arena, and it was pretty easy for him to get underneath either the wedge or the sides and just flip me up in the air, and that is definitely how you show aggression, control, and um, I guess damage to some extent. There's no real damage from that, but he was definitely controlling that fight and flipping me up in the air, and it was always fun seeing something like Lolo Man flipping up through the air. So overall, this was um, an interesting competition for Lolo Man. I ended up um, having the one win and two losses, so not so great. Lolo Man is one of those really interesting bots that's more of a concept and more of kind of a, um, I think it's a disruptive design. Like I see, you know, huge and any of those kind of overhead tall bots as kind of disruptive designs. They're kind of hard to plan for. But in the case of Lolo Man, they really need certain conditions. Lolo Man really needs a pit and it also really needs a very flat and good arena surface. If you don't have that good surface, you're going to have a bad time, and if you don't have a pit, it's going to be very, very, very difficult to get a win out of it. So I think this was kind of interesting going from ARC last year where I just completely dominated, and it was almost too easy. It just nothing could hit it. It was just a really easy win for me, and then moving over to this to where it was just absolutely impossible to really get a win out of a match unless the other guy just died on me. So um, yeah, it was kind of an interesting experience going from both of those extremes. So for right now, Lolo Man's going to be tabled um, and I'm not really gonna do anything with it until I go to another competition where there is a pit or there is a really good solid floor. So we'll see how that goes. But as always, thanks for watching. Um, check out my other videos. I've got more recap videos, um, I think for Psychotic Break coming up. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.